Hey guys, welcome back to The Why Project. This is our next episode and we are here with Miss Sullivan. Hey. Hi, how's it going? Going well, how are you doing? Oh, hanging in there, missing everybody. I know, it's so strange not to see everyone every day, for sure. It is. But hopefully we will see them or they will see us and that will be like we're seeing them through this video. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If we're saying hello the best way we can. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So let's just dive right in. Um, what's your why? And also maybe introduce yourself because some people might not know um, what you do at the school. Um, and then, yeah, what's your why? Um, and what keeps you coming to school every day? Okay, well, for those of you that don't know me, I have um, been teaching English. I've been um, the lead replacement for Miss Gaspar, and I moved here from California last August. So I'm new to Washington and new to Mount Baker, but I was teaching in California for about six years before that, too. Um, my why is kind of two parts. So it, the first part starts when I was in school. Um, I was really, really, really excited about being a large animal vet most of my life. And I really loved science. And up through till seventh grade, it was always my favorite subject. And I have this very vivid memory of in seventh grade, my school is seventh through 12th. They gave us our course catalogs and I sat down and I picked out like all of the high level science classes. And I was so excited through all of my senior year of high school to take all the upper level sciences. And I go up to my teacher who was gonna be the upper level science class for the next year. And I was like, look, Mr. Janicek, I'm so excited to do this science path. And he looks at it and he's like, you can't do this. You're in the lower math track. You're not going to be able to do this. And it just kind of like, it was such a little thing, but for my little brain at that time, it was just like devastating. I was like, wait, what do you mean? Like math and science, they go together? Like why? <laughs> um, and um, so it just kind of crushed everything. And so I was like, well, I guess since I can't take these upper level science classes, I'll take the upper level English classes. And from there, I kind of plodded along and I did fine in school, but I wasn't really excited about anything anymore. Like I used to love science. Um, and that led me to my sophomore English teacher, Miss Tapia, who was this terrifying woman, just terrifying. And everyone had all sorts of scary stories about her. And at the end of class one day, she gave out all of our essays and then held mine and said, Ginny, I need to see you after class, which, so I go up to her, like everyone's gone and I'm so worried about what she has in that essay. And she's like, you know, you're really good at this. You should work a little harder and you'd actually be really, really good at writing. And it was the first time someone had taken a moment to tell me I was good at something in school for a very long time, like probably since elementary school. And it just shifted everything for me. Like I went from just being in love with science to being in love with English and went through the rest of high school and was like, you know what? I want to be an English teacher. Like I want to do that for someone one day. And then ultimately after that, I got to college and I got an opportunity to start teaching creative writing at the Santa Cruz County Jail. And I was like, well, this will be good. I'll get to test out writing and test out teaching. And I got to know these people that had these just incredible stories, like just their life stories of like, oh my God, you lived through that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh, if I could be an English teacher and get one kid to feel comfortable at school, one, just one who's going through some of the stuff that these people went through, then maybe that would be a really good thing for the world. Um, and so from then on, I became an English teacher. That's so cool. <laughs> I love what you mentioned about like those small moments and you had those two small moments, one that kind of impacted you in a negative way, but ended up being a positive thing. And yeah. the other, um, with your English teacher, that it was just such a small moment. And she probably, maybe she doesn't even know that that one moment really like drove you to where you are today, but it's such a good reminder to everybody that our, our words matter and those small moments sometimes shape us and shape the people who we surround ourselves with, so. Totally, and when people think they like, oh, it's kind of weird, should I reach out to that person? Like you have no idea what reaching out to that person 
how that might impact their life. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, the next part of this is sort of like an encouraging challenge um, to our viewers of something we can do to just have some positive spirit in this time. Well, um, one thing that I'm going to be starting to do, and I started thinking about this last night, is I suggest that everyone make a list of all the things that in our normal daily lives we think about doing and then think we don't have the time to do. So like clean out that one thing or draw or paint or play music or whatever it is that you are always like, oh, I wish I had time to blank. And make that list of all those things and every day make it a goal to do one of those things on that list. So you don't have to do everything every day, but just once a day, that's your 10 to 11.30 a.m. slot <laughs> of your day <laughs> doing one of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I definitely have been thankful for this time in the sense that I can think about what I would have liked to do with my time and, and really reprioritize that since I'm spending a lot more time at home <laughs> as exactly. we all are. <laughs> exactly. There's no longer excuse not to learn how to cook that thing or do whatever you wanted to do. Yes, for yeah. sure. Is there something in your mind that you're going to add to your list or that you have on your list? Well, one thing that I, so I started making a list and thing is like phone calls of people that I just need to stay in touch with and I don't normally stay in touch with. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to just try to call one person a day and talk to them. Um, another is painting. I really uh, miss painting and I, I kind of go through in and out when I actually do more painting. And so I'm going to try to once a week, maybe get out some paint and do some painting. So those are two and a lot of gardening, lots of yard work. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, maybe uh, we can have you on here again and you can share some of your artwork. I would love to see some of your artwork. That'd be sweet. Sounds like a plan. We could start a challenge or something. An <laughs> art challenge. <laughs> totally. The other thing I'm going to train my dog where I have like a list of, tri of tricks and things we're going to be doing <laughs> the dog. So, you know, we can always do a chili show later on. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for willing to be a part of this and sharing your story. And I'm sure it will impact many people. Thanks for putting all this together. Yeah. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.